Hello everyone, my name is Jason. Welcome back to this channel about magic. Today I'm reacting to Kevin Blake, a magician on Penn & Teller's Fool Us, season six, episode five. I've never heard of this guy before, but apparently he's gonna be doing some card magic. But before we get into the reaction, guess what time it is? Well, that's right, it's story time, Aesop's Fables. And today we're gonna be reading chapter 35, the dog, the cock, and the fox. Ignore this bull. This bull has nothing to do with our story. <clears throat> The dog, the cock, and the fox. A dog and a cock became great friends and agreed to travel together. At nightfall, the cock flew up into the branches of a tree to roost, while the dog curled himself up inside the trunk, which was hollow. Okay, so the cock is up in the branches of the tree and the dog is sleeping inside of the trunk of the tree. Check. At break of day, the cock woke up and crew, as usual. Crew, I guess that's like old English past tense of crowed. Anyway. A fox heard and was wishing to make a breakfast of him, <laughs> came and stood under the tree and begged him to come down. I should so like, said he, to make the acquaintance of one who has such a beautiful voice. The cock replied, would you just wake my porter who sleeps at the foot of the tree? He'll open the door and let you in. The fox accordingly rapped on the trunk, when out rushed the dog and tore him in pieces. <laughs> No moral of the story is listed. I guess it's supposed to be obvious. So clearly, the moral of the story is that it's good to have a bodyguard. We should all become vegans. Or maybe, if you're a fox, don't wake the porter. So really, I guess, depending on your perspective, you could draw different conclusions from this story. But uh, I guess I'm gonna go with, it's good to have a bodyguard. It's good to have friends to help you out. Don't go and knock and when the Dogs are sleeping in the trunk of the tree you're sleeping in the branches of. Yeah. Anyway, comment below your thoughts on this story and if you think there's some lesson to be learned. With that being said, let's just jump right into the reaction. My name is Kevin Blake and I'm a writer and a magician. I think I got into magic because I have a twin sister. Magic was my way of saying, you know, look at me, mom, dad, ignore. The, uh, the adorable girl over there and, and pay attention to me. I'm still very competitive. I'm a swimmer and I've made the Olympic trials twice. Nice. Going up against Penn and Teller tonight, I do want to win. I'm not a full-time professional magician. I work day to day as a writer for an ad agency and I uh, use words very heavily in my performance. Magic is incantations, spells, language is magical. There is a lot riding on this for me because it'll be the first time showing kind of the magical world who I am because I'm completely unknown. Please welcome the multi-talented Kevin Blake. Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Blake and I'm here to show you my rendition on a classic in magic. In fact, perhaps the most classic of all illusions, I'm talking of course about the pick a card trick. Now for this, I will of course need the help of two lovely assistants, so let's give them a warm round of applause as they join me up on the stage, Mr. Penn and Teller, the gentlemen Penn and Teller. By the way, I just want to add real quick, when he says the most classic card trick, the pick a card trick. You know what's really funny? Actually, really frustrating as a magician. I've had this happen maybe just once or twice, is that you're gonna show someone a magic trick, you pull out a deck of cards, and as soon as someone sees the cards come out, they say, oh, I've seen this trick before. And it's like, what? What are you talking about? You know, there are like a million variations of card effects you can do. Imagine that a painter pulls out his brush to start and someone says, oh, I've seen this before. Anyway, end of a rant. It just reminded me of that and I thought I would share that for some of you who uh, might find it interesting. Proceeding. This is a pick a card trick. So obviously it's very important that you guys know that all the cards are different and in no particular order. Yes? And I'll give them a shuffle just so you guys can, because you don't trust me. So I'll give him a little shuffle, give him a few more shuffles. The other very important thing to note here is that there are no markings or anything on the backs of the cards that could allow me or anyone else to know what the cards are by looking at the backs. That's not how this trick works, Pen. Okay? So, it is a pick a card trick though, so it's actually one better than a pick a card trick, which is a pick two cards trick. So we're gonna have you pick a card and then you pick a card. But just to be very fair, I'll just give it a few more shuffles. Seems like and fair shuffles. We are ready. So, first, Pen. I want you to just tell me when to stop over any card that you like. Okay. Stop. Seems like that's that card. Is that the card you want? I was going to go one further. You want to go one further? Oh, wow, he's a tough cookie. 
You want to change your mind? You want to stick with this one? I want to stick with that stick one. Stick with that one again. Put your hand on it. Just okay, it really seems like a fair choice. Perfect. Tyler, your turn. I just want you to tell me when to stop in whatever nonverbal way you have. Right there. Is that, is that the card? I'm going to give you one chance to change your mind. Do you want to stick with this card or do you want to go with a different card? Okay. Go ahead and put your hand on it just like that. Now, I said this was my rendition of a pick a card trick, and I said that word on purpose, rendition. And that's because this trick has a musical component to it. Now, I am a magician, but I'm also a rapper. I love hip hop and language and rhymes and stories, and so I thought instead of just doing a card trick, I'd tell you a story. And it goes like this. Now, this trick really isn't about me. It's about these two people sitting next to me. It's about Teller over here. He doesn't speak, but he still says so much with his facial morphologies, apologies. I can't forget you, Pendulette. You've got the razor sharp mind. It's the intellect. We respect all the verbiage you project. Sometimes it's too much, but let's change the subject. <laughs> My name is Kevin Blake. And I'm a magic man, a hominid, dominant species on the planet, man, part Irish, German, Scottish, and French, Canadian, full mammalian, homo sapien, using words, sesquipedalian, alien, wise man speaks, splits us from the apes and aliens, but it's not just language, it's the things we do, spending all our time mastering, simple card handling, shuffling, rectangle, paper pieces, so challenging for what? Why do we like being fooled? Where's the joy in that? Teach, teach, take me back to school, dunce cap in the corner, pointing fingers, broke the rules, it's a crazy world. When the peak of an art form is to fool you two. You know, we're told our whole lives, don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat, don't deceive, don't fool each other. And yet us magicians, that's all we do. You know, people often ask me, like, are you Chris Angel? Do you know David Blaine? Can you show me something? Are you able to cut Sharon in half? Do you have a pet bunny? Hey, you're not as quite as tall as Penn, nor as funny, and that's true. But still, <laughs> I got something to show you guys. So it's time for me to cut to the chase. I have a prediction for you guys of what cards that I thought you were going to choose, and it's in the rhyme. Listen. Hey guys, it's Kevin. In pre-recorded form, chances my performance will conform to pattern and not fool you. But that doesn't matter, that's just one part. Because what if Teller chose the two of hearts? What if Teller chose the two of hearts? What if? Then it's your turn. You chose a card too, and I'm pretty sure you've got the King of Spades in front of you. That is, in fact, the two of hearts and the King of Spades out of a completely random deck. Thank you so much, Teller. Thank you so much, Penn, and thank you all. Thank you. Thank everyone. That was very impressive. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give you my thoughts before we hear what everyone has to say. So first off, that's incredibly unique and original to uh, combine rapping with magic tricks. At least I've never seen anything like that before. Secondly, that explains that huge red car in the background. I was wondering about that. Thirdly, as far as how the trick's done, uh, my thought would be that he's like pre-recorded 52 outs for any of the cards they could have selected and just chose the correct options to play at the end. So maybe he somehow... Maybe the cards were marked, even though he said they weren't. It's just a magician lying kind of situation. Obviously, he has to have a sound person working off stage to play the music for him and to control when to play the reveal audio files. So probably he had some way to communicate with that person which cards were selected, and they just played the appropriate sound files. But anyway, I thought it was a cool presentation. He seems like a really interesting guy, like a smart guy. And it's cool that he did this rapping uh, about magic and had some funny parts in there too that made me laugh. <laughs> At some parts in the song, it seemed like he transitioned from rapping just into normally speaking and then back into rapping again. I'm not really a huge connoisseur of rap, so I don't know if that's a normal thing they do. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's something I've never seen before and it was cool. Well, let's just find out what Penn and Teller have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Man, and you're letting them, like, take the cards oh, yeah, to look course, at them. Wow. Well, because. They're, they know stuff. They do know stuff. Yeah. They do. I really like to rap. What makes you more nervous, rapping in front of them or doing a card trick? In uh, definitely the card trick. Rapping, I know that they're, uh, well, I actually don't know how deep their knowledge of the cuts go, but uh, I know that they have a lot of card tricks under their belt, so. Oh, Teller raps a mean rap. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Have you always enjoyed rap? I've always enjoyed writing and poetry and spoken word and that kind of thing. Uh, so combining rap and Hip hop and music and adding it, making it something, uh, you know, bring it into into an act is, is I feel one of the only ways that we can be truly creative in magic. There's only so many methods. There's only so many 
card tricks. So how do you make something different? Well, you bring something else into it. Hmm. Well, it's time to wrap this yeah. up and That's see a good what point. Penn and Teller figured out. All right. Penn, Teller. Boy, we love that. I mean, really, really loved it. It was, it's crazy good and just wonderful and so sweet. And you did this uh, uh, great thing, which is you put in a lot of provers. You showed us you couldn't be doing a deck switch. You couldn't be doing a force. You closed all those doors. And you did so many provers that we were mm -hmm. back into a corner. Yeah. And then you did this incredibly gutsy thing of giving us this deck. And we've been talking back and forth. And the problem is, Kevin, that we've got all these kind of clever things that we could do to, um, to speak to you in code. And I don't want to do that because I'm afraid it gives away too much. This yeah. was too beautiful. So we're going to have Teller go up and whisper to you. Sure. So there'll be no code, no nothing. And then you just tell us, and I'll be ready here for the trophy, because if we're not right on this one, you win. And if we are right, you still did a great routine. Um, you write in the exact ways you need to be. So I did not fool you. Yeah. Oh, Damn! Oh. We really wanted you to, man. So it was so good. good. So good. So good. All right, so let me go ahead and give you my concluding thoughts. My first thought right now I want to say before I forget is that it seems like every time they have a guest on the show, regardless of if he wins or doesn't win, they always have him leave the stage really fast, and I feel like I'm not ready for the person to go, and all of a sudden they're just running off the stage. Does anyone else feel that way too, or is it just me? I feel like I need more closure. Second off, I gotta agree with what Penn said, because in magic theory, magicians often mention this concept of too perfect and when you're presenting a magic effect and you eliminate all these possible options clearly like it couldn't be any of these things like he was really shuffling the cards pin and teller each had a legitimate free choice there's no doubt in your mind about that then your mind is free to focus more on the parts that do matter for finding the method so i actually think he could have benefited from making it a little more fuzzy and a little bit unclear if those were free choices and a little more unclear if he was really shuffling the cards leave a little room for doubt leave a Comment below, what do you think? Thirdly, I was just thinking about it. It's possible his method is even more complicated than I imagined. Perhaps he had a really complicated series of different words and wraps he could use, kind of like a coding system that Penn and Teller mentioned before. So depending what he was rapping about, that was communicating to his offstage audio helper, and that person listened for the right words and knew which of his results file to play. Anyway, that's just my speculation. I could be wrong about many things. Feel free to leave your comments below. If you want to see more reactions like this, make sure to subscribe. Check my homepage for other videos. Smash like, and I will see you next time. Yep.